Hello everybody, welcome back for another video. Hope that you're all doing well and that you are all having a great day to start things off. Ari Paul, who is the Chief Investment Officer at cryptocurrency hedge fund Block Tower Capital, recently told CNBC that he believes it is inevitable that institutional investment funds will add cryptocurrencies to their portfolios sooner rather than later. He said, I do think it's inevitable from a few angles, even if they never believe in it as an asset class, they're smart enough to recognize the alpha opportunity. So the idea goes, according to him, that everyone is literally waiting on the sidelines right now. They're all on the fence waiting for someone to dip their toe into the pool. And he said, even if it's a small name that kind of gets into this, everyone else would kind of dump their money into it. He said, a small money amount is also something that is very uh, important. He said, if someone like Yale decides to jump into it, everyone else will completely jump into the pool. Everyone's just kind of waiting because he said, no one wants to look silly for jumping in first, but everybody wants to jump in, but they're just waiting for someone else to kind of do it, which I guess is the mentality of how we all act when it comes to certain things, especially when it comes to cryptocurrencies. Uh, but there are a lot of, uh, not hedge funds, what's it called? Retirement funds that are based around cryptocurrency. So I'm kind of shocked that this hasn't already really taken off, especially when they see that the money is there. Next up, good news if you are holding Cardano. Smart contracts platform Cardano rose 10% April 15th after China-based cryptocurrency exchange Huobi announced it would be adding its ADA token. ADA token? ADA token. I'll say ADA token. Uh... Cardano, which founder Charles Hoskins confirmed had debuted on the exchange, sparked fresh enthusiasm among traders this month after he spoke about a number of other upgrades that would be coming to the platform. Among them, his work on Cardano's Shelly, which places more power in the hands of users, is also complete and rolling out expected around quarter two and quarter three. We're currently in quarter two, so I assume that will be coming up soon. It's nice to hear some or any good news about Cardano. They are rarely in the news in like a prominent or dominant way usually uh the other major altcoins tend to take up the spotlight at the current moment cardano is actually up the most out of the entire market the entire market is actually slightly down i believe by two percent which i'll get into in a couple of seconds it's not super super important but so it's, it's nice to see that this is actually going strong while the rest of the market is still pulling back a couple of percent next up the eu nation of malta is moving closer to introducing a test that would clearly define when assets derived from ICOs are securities, which is the news of the month. Everything is revolving around securities. What's a security? What is not a security? Why this is blah, blah, blah security. It's always about securities and anything around regulation. In a consultation paper published Friday from which it currently seeks public feedback, the Malta Financial Security Authority, the FSA, set out a proposal for a so-called financial instrument test, which would ultimately become part of its proposed Virtual Financial Asset Act, Act the VFAA. The agency said the methodology of the test has been designed based on the feedback from its previous discussion paper released in November 2017, which initially introduced the concept so I assume this would take a couple of months for them to kind of get this all together. There are a lot of uh, companies, major companies that are now moving into smaller island countries, which I spoke about a couple of days ago. And this is going to become a huge trend as we go forward. This is where the money tends to go. It's these uh, countries or nation states that are more favorable when it comes to cryptocurrency. And this is exactly what's happening now. So it seems that they are trying to get their eggs in order in order to be able to know exactly how these people will be taxed and exactly what coins can do what inside of the country. So let's wish them good luck on that. In a not so surprising uh, bit of news, despite all the doubts and controversies surrounding the project El Petro, the Venezuelan cri cryptocurrency has received the Satoshi Nakamoto Prize from the Russian Cryptocurrency and Blockchain Association the RACIB, for its outstanding contribution to the development of the blockchain industry, according to the official community. Right. The award ceremony was held in Russia and was attended by Venezuelan ambassador Carlos Rafael Faria Tortosa. I thought that was the end of his name. <laughs> in addition to El Petro, the award ceremony that took place at the World Trade Center during the Blockchainif, B L O C K C H E I N F 2018 International Congress held by Recibe 
had another 12 winners in different categories. Receive is an organization active in the Russian blockchain industry and has several members from traditional and fintech sectors, including government. So there was a lot of news or speculation that was floating around that a lot of people believed that Russia had a hand in the uh, birthing or the uh, coming forth, if you will, of the Venezuelan cryptocurrency project and this kind of solidifies that they may have had something to do with it if you receive the satoshi nakamoto prize when especially when there are other cryptocurrencies that are kind of floating around out there uh so the news about it is that pretty much that the petro was created in order to get around u.s sanctions russia also i believe has a couple of u.s sanctions on them and this is why there was news that they were in talks to create their own cryptocurrency which apparently is illegal under uh uh all these other laws or whatever the case might be so um you better believe that are probably going to be a couple of other countries that are also going to start coming forward who have uh, restrictions from the u.s that they will be creating their own coin and it's going to create a really weird ecosystem that i don't think any of us are actually prepared for uh so the other news today was that this morning when i first woke up bitcoin actually shot up to eight thousand four hundred dollars a coin while Cardano also went up by uh, 10 to 11 percent at the moment up here. Bitcoin is currently down a couple of dollars from when I first started making the video um, to seven thousand nine hundred and seventy one dollars at the time of me making this video. Apparently, so the next level of resistance that everyone keeps saying that we have to pass by is eight thousand five hundred dollars a coin. It hit eight thousand four hundred and fifty. I guess people got scared. The prices started moving backwards because this apparently is the next indication that we are at the very end of the bear market. And when we do hit 8,500, the next step is obviously then logically 9,000. And this is a good indicator as we get towards $10,000 a coin that we have left the bear market behind. And this is when new money should start toppling into the market as FOMO begins to take hold of everyone. I... I give it to the middle of the week unless we get something. I mean, we were talking about this before, how the price kept on. It wouldn't let it get past 7000. But I think at this point, it's I don't want to say fairly certain. I don't want to jinx it. I think I think the market will do OK within about a day or two. I think we just need some uh, good news to kind of push everything back up. Last thing to cover for today on I think it was March 31st. We were talking about that. Uh, there was a huge joke going around that Vitalik had made. On April 1st, he said, haha, it was an April Fool's joke. I got you all. And then it seems that he actually may have not been completely joking, especially because a uh, day after he said that I wasn't joking, people were actually talking about what was going on and how they actually thought it might be something significant. So part of the joke was that for those who do not know, there is no cap on the amount of Ethereum that can be mined. It is meant to go on forever. This The idea behind it was that as there's a millions of bitcoin that have been completely lost and will never be found again the original idea was that eventually ethereum would be also lost on the network people would lose their wallets people would lose the computers the computers would be broken something would happen where this millions of ethereum would also go lost and it would kind of hurt the system what have you so the idea was put in place that if they have some type of inflation in place that would equally cover the coins that were lost everyone would be able to have a bit of ethereum but now it seems that they're talking about putting an actual cap on the number of Ethereum to around 120 million coins. And as we get closer to that, the uh, discussion is actually heating up. And when Ethereum first started, this was a really big thing. And I actually joined in on a number of discussions that were floating around online about capping it at some certain point. Because part of the problem with Dogecoin that we had was that people thought the creator especially, that we should have an infinite amount of Dogecoin and it could just keep being printed forever and forever, ever. And this causes the price to go down. So he's now slowly understanding that Ethereum has become bigger than he ever thought it would. And he's now citing economic stability for the project. So I do think, even if not 120 million, I'd say we may have a discussion around 150 million, somewhere around there. But I think this is around the number where it should be capped. I don't think there should be an infinite amount of Ethereum. This is just my personal thought from having been inside of the project for very long. There was a point where they were also talking about doing this as well. Sorry for the long Ethereum discussion. Uh, when Ethereum was first, first, first starting out, I think there was a point where it could not pass five to eight dollars. There was just something going on that it couldn't pass it. And 
there was a there was a huge discussion about actually ending the Ethereum project. A lot of people don't know this. It was one of the very very early days, and they uh, people behind Ethereum came forward and they said, you know, we can't actually continue the project unless the price goes up. I don't know who pushed the price up. That's up for you to decide and or think about. But the price shut up to around like twenty dollars a couple of days after that because there was a lot of concern that Ethereum wouldn't be able to make it. So I guess this is kind of step two or three when it comes to the project because they realize if you keep printing something forever it's probably going to eventually lose its value like a lot of the fiat currencies that we have floating around on this planet. All right, everyone, that is definitely going to do it for this video. I want to say not a lot of news, but I guess there was a lot of things uh, going on. Just a lot of tiny things that are floating around. Nothing too major with any project. Uh, I hope you guys are having a great Monday. Hope you guys are enjoying your Monday. A lot of people do not like Mondays. Hope your money goes well. Hope you find money in the street. Hope crypto prices go back up and hope you have something good to eat for lunch. And yeah, I will talk to you all soon. See you.